Hi, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Shannon from SIS for Teachers. Today we're going to be talking about division, but we're going to be relating it to fractions. When we think about this, this sounds a little bit scary when we're starting to think about how to do it differently um, than using it other than a procedure that we might not completely understand. And so what we're going to take is kind of our understanding about what we know about division and kind of relate it to what we know with fractions. If I were to write this statement, 30 divided by five, what does that mean? It's really wanting to know, when I'm looking at this, some kids might say it means divide, some kids might even be able to solve the problem and give the answer, but it really wants to know how many fives are in 30. When we think about this for division, it's asking this question, that sounds a little bit different. In our previous multiplication videos that we've done, we've talked about it means, you know, if it's 30 times fives, it means 30 groups of five. This is looking at the other way and it's asking how many fives are in 30. It would be the same thing if I were to ask about 81 divided by nine. It wants to know how many nines are in 81. Obviously, there can be remainders and different things here, but as we start to understand this concept and we're looking at it with fractions, it's important to relate it to what you know about whole numbers to make the transfer to fractions. We always wanna show our understanding through CPA, Concrete Pictorial Abstract. So I have some pattern blocks here that we're gonna demonstrate our understanding of division of fractions. We're gonna have our hexagon equal to one whole. We know that we can put two trapezoids on top, so we know that those are equal to one half. Three of our rhombus will fit on top of the whole, so that is going to be equal to one third. And then for our triangles, it's going to be equal to one sixth. The reason why I like using the pattern blocks for division of fractions is because it's kind of easy for kids to see it based on a manipulative that they might be used to. It's important first to start off with looking at, um, you know, with a whole number really divided by something. So if I wrote this statement out, it says three divided by one third. But if I thought about it in this way, it's really asking how many one thirds are there in three? So in this case, we're gonna use all of the hexagons that I have to show our three whole. We now have to ask ourselves how many thirds are going to fit. So sometimes it's, it's, it's strange because when we use it with multiplication, you know, we normally know with whole numbers it gets, the number gets higher in the product, right? Um, when you use it with division, usually it's getting smaller, but we're actually wanting to know how many of these are in here. We're not even talking about a whole. So it's gonna give us, you know, it's gonna let us know how many times that's going in. So I'm gonna look to see if I needed to figure out how many thirds are in my three. I'm gonna go ahead and match up my thirds on top of my whole pieces, which in this case are a hexagon. As I start to use this, I'm gonna utilize all the pieces that I have um, to, in my kit to kind of see how many there would be all together. And so if it's asking how many thirds are there in three, I have to count these individually. There's one third, two thirds, three thirds, right? We have four thirds, five, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds. So if I were to look at the total here, I know that there are nine times this group goes in to our three whole. Let's take another example to look at this as we might think of it maybe even using something, um, different, different shapes that we might want to use or different um, parts. Let's say I wanted to know, um, let's say if I did two divided by one half. That's a little bit simpler for us to think about, but again, I'm going to put out my two because it's asking us how many halves are there in two. Simply building that with your pattern blocks will help you to see how many go in there. So we know we don't write this as a fraction because it wants to know how many of these fit into two. So I know that there's one, two, three, four. 
If we looked at this the other way, if we looked at what is, you know, four times one half, it's just like it does with whole numbers. Four times one half, we know equals two. So if you can relate the family of division, not only as we might do here in a multiplication division with whole numbers, but connect to students that if we were to take one half times four or four times one half, we're gonna get two, which kind of makes that nice fact family make sense. Let's try one more as an example before you might try some of these on your own in your classroom. Let's say I wanted to know if I had um, the number three and I wanted to know how many groups of, uh, maybe I wanna look at um, two thirds. Okay, so how many, how many two thirds fit in three? So we're gonna put this here, I'm gonna have my three and I wanna know how many groups of the two thirds fit. So I know that this is one group. I know that this is two groups. Be careful you keep track of the groups. We're not saying this is four because we're looking at two thirds. So one set of two thirds fits, two sets of two thirds fit, another set of two thirds fit, and now I'm gonna go on and continue my next set of two thirds. So let's count and see how many full sets fit. I know that I have one, two, three, four. Four times it went in, but I can't get another two thirds to fit. So it's really half of what this is asking us, right? It's only half of the two thirds that will fit. So we know this goes in only four and a half times. We hope this makes sense to you, this video, as you start to model these out. This one might be a little bit more complicated, so you might want to start off first with kind of using this concept with unit fractions as you become more comfortable with how many fit. Um, sometimes kids want to write one-third here, but the actual reality is that it only fit half of our set that we were dividing by, so that's why it's a half, which makes a little bit more sense as you see it with the conceptual tool. Can you come up on your own in your group maybe with another division of fraction that you could come up with and kind of create for your class using the pattern blocks that we're using. We hope that you found the video helpful to kind of relate what you know about division with whole numbers and then kind of transferring what you're thinking with a whole number divided by a fraction. They don't always go in nice and evenly, but it might be easier to start off with ones that go in evenly and then use that whole number to figure out if there might be extra as you're doing it. You can use pattern blocks or other fraction tools to, to model this, but the most important part is that you're able to not just you know, flip something and, and do a, a magical trick to get the answer, that you actually know why that you're doing it and, you know, instead of just learning the how. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you'll check out our website at sis4teachers.org to help bring other videos into your classroom to help explain how we go about solving different things in math.